The Green Bay Packers of the 1950s were one of the worst teams in the NFL, winning just 39 games throughout the decade. There was little reason to believe their destiny was about to change when they drafted a young quarterback out of Alabama named Brian Bartlett Starr. I didn't have a resume coming out of college. I was injured my last two years. I was lucky to be drafted. And if the basketball coach at the University of Alabama had not been a good friend of the personnel director of the Packers, I probably would not have been drafted at all. But in the 17th round, they, they took a chance on me. A rotating starter during his early years, Starr's initial snaps as the Packers signal caller were anything but stellar. My first year or two, Bart Starr was an unknown quantity. Uh, to me, he was like methane gas, colorless, odorless, tasteless, virtually invisible. Good fortune fell on the town of Green Bay and Bart Starr with the arrival of head coach Vince Lombardi in 1959. When I came up as a rookie, it was 1959, it was Vince's first year, and Bart never had really established himself as a starting quarterback. And he didn't really establish himself as a starting quarterback under Vince until sometime in the second half of 1960. Vince used to get on Bart pretty good, you know, early, and I think Vince had a way of learning who he could get into and who he couldn't. I had to earn his trust and respect during that first year he was there and actually into the second year. In fact, only one time in our nine years together did I ever ask for a meeting for a correction, if you will. And that was in practice when a tipped ball was intercepted and he chewed me out like you wouldn't believe. And I didn't say anything at the time, but after practice I asked to see him. And when we went in his office, I said, Coach, Many times in the past, you've chewed me out, and that's no problem. I grew up under a master sergeant, so I can take that. I said, would you please, if you want to chew me out, fine, but please do it here in private so that you don't diminish my ability to lead this team. But we had the greatest relationship after that. I so thought we weren't going to use the four pass for this thing. <laughs> With Starr calling the plays for Lombardi's offense, the two developed a symbiotic rapport. In the process, Green Bay went from 1950s laughing stock to the definitive NFL powerhouse of the 1960s. Bart was the perfect extension of Lombardi on the field. Lombardi trusted Bart with his offense. And uh, he was the only one he trusted with it. Starr validated Lombardi's trust with a precision passing style that was good enough to lead the NFL three times. But it was his poised leadership on the field that set Starr apart. I think the quality of a great leader, of a great quarterback, is being able to deliver when you have to. Anyone can perform when there's almost no pressure. But I think those who truly play the game respond best to a supreme challenge. The ultimate pressure player, Bart Starr is the NFL's all-time winningest quarterback, having led the Packers to five world titles, including a pair of MVP performances in Super Bowls I and II. Bart did not have the strongest of arms. He was as accurate up to 40 yards as any player that's ever played in the National Football League history, period. He was cool, he was analytical, and he threw 244 passes and games to determine titles without an interception. He played the game not with a spectacular flair. He was workmanlike in what he did. One of my favorite quotes is from William Jennings Bryan. And I think it sums up how I feel about my career when he said that destiny is not a matter of chance. It's a matter of choice. It is not something to be wished for. It is something to be attained. 